good friend Hank Sal, who does an outstanding job covering Alabama recruiting at BamaOnline.com for the 24-7 Sports dot com network hank how are you doing on this thursday morning i'm doing good travis how about you i cannot complain it's one of those few times in the month of january where maybe i'm as busy as you are with all this coaching staff turnover (laughs) i know it goes hand in hand uh because the crimson tide certainly looking to put a strong finish on what is already an immensely talented of early signees uh but that's why we have you here today hank and sort of reset things uh give us a perspective i guess first and foremost who exactly is on the road recruiting for alabama other than nick saban right now yeah you know uh there, there's been a few coaches still out um on alabama's behalf we've seen uh jeff banks obviously is putting in a lot of work he's been in florida he's been in arizona he's in texas he's all over the place um uh, we've seen pete golding still making stops he's expected to see um uh, alabama commit byron young today in mississippi Carl Scott's been out on the road. Uh, and we've seen Craig Kulagowski out on the road as well. Um, so those are kind of the main guys right now. And, and of course, Saban's making the rounds as well, too. Seeing a lot of underclassmen. Um, obviously, uh, with the early signing period um, in place for the second year now, Alvin has the majority of his 2019 class wrapped up, which, um, you know, a lot of people have their opinions on the early signing period, and, and a lot of coaches have their opinions on it. But, uh, kind of with this situation now with Alabama where they're having some staff turnover, kind of uh, alleviates a little bit of the stress, it seems. You know, they only have a few spots they have to fill, um, and they have a really good class already squared away and ready to go. So, um, yeah, those, those are the main coaches out on the road right now, and, and um, they're seeing the 2019 guys they can see and also um, kind of looking towards the future in 2020 and 2021. Let's talk about Tosh Lapoy and his anticipated departure from this Alabama program, I guess sort of a retrospective of what he's done uh, on the recruiting front. You know, it's, it's, it's been immense. I think we know that, Uh, but also where things sit with a couple of the important guys, one in particular, a linebacker that's over in Honolulu right now set to participate in that Polynesian bowl coming up this weekend. And maybe some of the loose ends that'll have to be picked up with LaPoy moving on. Yeah, you know, he's obviously one of the stronger recruiters on the staff, on Alabama's staff. Um, so certainly there, there's going to be implications if he does move on to Cleveland Browns, to the Cleveland Browns, which he's um, reportedly planning on doing. Um, obviously, Henry Toa Toa, we, we talked about kind of those last few spots in Alabama's 2019 class, and he's one of those top priority guys, um, an inside linebacker out of uh, Concord, California, De La Salle High School. Um, and he was pretty close with Tosh Lepoy. Uh Obviously, the main connection there being they both went to De La Salle High School. Um, so, so he's got that uh, kind of connection with um, with Lupoy. Um But at the same time, we, we caught up with Henry uh, a few weeks ago at the All-American Bowl, and like you said, he's out in Honolulu at the uh, Polynesian Bowl this week. Um, and, and he talked about, obviously, you know, he's very close to Tosh Lupoy. He's a very important part of his recruitment. But he's also been talking to Pete Golding, uh, who would be his position coach if he were to come to Alabama. Um, and he still has his in-home visit with Nick Saban, and he still has an official visit to Alabama to take next weekend. So... Um, I know on, on 24-7 Sports, there's, there's been a couple of crystal ball predictions for Toa Toa to, uh, to go to Tennessee now that Tosh Lepoy is uh, reportedly leaving Alabama. Um, I, I think Tennessee's the top competition for him, um, but at the same time, I think it might be a little bit too early to kind of jump ship on Alabama's chances here just without Tosh Lepoy on the staff. Uh, you can't really ever underestimate Nick Saban and, and his closing ability, especially at a, at a position of need like inside linebacker. And so, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Nick Saban's going to see him later this month. And like I said, he'll be in Tuscaloosa next weekend. Uh, so he's going to get a chance. I would imagine there's going to be a defensive coordinator in place by the time Toa Toa visits, at least an idea of a defensive coordinator. So um, so we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But, yeah, Bama kind of has uh, a little bit uh, of, of time on its hands to, um, you know, get back in there with him and, and, uh, and kind of show him what, what their plan is. Talking with Hank South, recruiting analyst for BamaOnline.com on Southern Fried Sports, presented by Carty and Lloyd, attorneys at law, and also Mercedes-Benz of Tuscaloosa. So, as of today, Nick Saban, the last few days, has been piling up the, the, the flight miles. Um, is, he, is he on the road today, uh, Hank, uh, visiting with some players? Yeah, uh, so we reported earlier this morning that uh, he is – Expected in Texas today, and it's actually an interesting target. It's a guy we, we've talked about a lot before, but 
not really as of the late, as of this fall, really. Um, his name is Javon Shepard. He is a four-star offensive lineman from, the, from Houston, and he's committed to Texas. He did not sign with Texas in the early signing period while he's still uh, planning on taking some visits and, and uh, Georgia, Texas a and and Alabama looks to be still in the mix. And um, it, it's funny because Javon Shepard has said all along, he, Bama's in the top five. He's going to take an official visit to Alabama. And uh, you can kind of just never really heard his name. And we never, it didn't really ever seem like that was going to happen. And uh, so we wasn't really clear where the interest level was. But, you know, if Nick Saban's using an in-home visit to go see a recruit, probably means they're still pretty interested in him. And he is, he is actually expected to take an official visit to Tuscaloosa next weekend after he goes to Georgia this weekend. So, um, we'll see. I mean, they, they uh, might still be in on, on uh, Javon Shepard there. They obviously already have a very, very strong offensive line class, uh, but they didn't sign uh, they didn't sign Clay Webb, and, and they didn't. And it's not really looking like they're going to sign Darnell Wright, the five star tackle from West Virginia. So uh, they might be looking to uh, to get back in on Javon Shepard. So that's where Nick Saban is, is expected today. I'd imagine uh, being in the Houston area, they'll probably see some of the other top talent in that in that hotbed recruiting territory as well. Uh, but but main name to know today is Javon Shepard. So, in terms of, of of what this this attrition has has done to the to the recruiting effort logistically, has it changed some dates in terms of official visit weekends? I'm guessing these these next two weekends after this weekend got to be huge, right? Absolutely. You know, um, it, it definitely has changed. I mean. Last weekend, they didn't host any official visitors. And I think that's pretty common. I, I, don't, I think most schools kind of held off on hosting visitors that first weekend out of the dead period. There wasn't a lot going on on campus anywhere. So uh, we, we saw a lot of schools kind of not have any guys on campus. This weekend, uh, we're seeing more visits set up. Um, Bama is currently not set to have any official visitors unless, that's changed, unless that changes between now and, and, uh, and this weekend. Um, and, and it makes sense, obviously, that they have this staff turnover. I think, I think they're trying to kind of get the pieces in place to – to where they can have the, the coaches on campus when uh, when recruits come in. So I would imagine, well, I, I know next week in the 25th to the 27th, and then the final weekend before National Signing Day, February 1st and 3rd, those are going to be big recruiting weekends in Tuscaloosa. We'll see more official visitors. Um, and there's actually a junior day next weekend, I believe, as well. So we'll see a lot of underclassmen on campus as well. And that's always kind of a – that always kind of gives you a picture of who's the priority guys going into the 2020-2021 class when you see who's on campus, uh, when, you, when you see who comes on campus those weekends. So, uh, yeah, this weekend probably not, not too much going on. Uh, we'll see visits elsewhere, but uh, the next two weekends after that, I think you'll see them really, you know, put the pedal to the metal and, and try to close this class out strong. Hank, is uh, Nathan Pickering the four-star defensive tackle out of Mississippi who's currently committed to Mississippi State? Is he still in play for this Alabama class? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting, I actually, uh, to kind of go along with Nathan Pickering there, I, I made a report last night, uh, Byron Young, the Alabama commit, defensive line commit from Mississippi as well, he has three official visits set up to, to close out the month before signing day. He says he's still solid with Alabama, but at the same time, he's taking visits, he hasn't signed. So Bama's going to keep recruiting that position, and, and one of those guys is Nathan Pickering. He's committed to Mississippi State, but kind of like with Byron Young in Alabama, he has not shut it down. He did not sign early with the Bulldogs. Um, and Nathan Pickering, his mom actually told us and reported earlier this week that he's taking his official visit the final weekend before National Signing Day. So that's going to be a really interesting visit to watch. I think we'll have a better idea of kind of where things stand. Obviously, we'll have a better idea of where things stand with the staff and probably where things stand with Byron Young. He's going to have taken two official visits since then. Uh, we'll see how, you know, how firm he is with Alabama. He's saying all the right things and he's still committed. But we'll kind of have a better idea. And, and if Bama really makes a push that final weekend, it could get really interesting with Nathan Pickering, especially considering he's, he's been saying that Bama's pushing harder than any other team. They're his number two team. If he wasn't going to Mississippi State, he would be going to Alabama. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, a lot can change in two weeks. Maybe Bama gets, that, gets over that final hump and, and flips Nathan Pickering. But, you know, the most you can ask for at this point is getting that visit, and they got on the on the prime weekend right before signing day. Uh, Hank, you touched on it just a minute ago. It's not just about finishing this 2019 class. There's a lot of 2020, 2021 uh, recruiting evaluation that's been going on, is going on right now. One of those guys of particular interest interest is 2020 quarterback commit Carson Beck of Jacksonville, Florida. You checked in with him here in the last day or so. This guy is Mr. Football in the state of Florida as a junior this season. Where does he stand right now with 
Enos leaving, with Loxley leaving, with the overturn there on the offensive side of the ball for Alabama? Yeah, he's going to be an interesting one to follow. Uh, he made an early commitment to Bama last summer. Uh, he, flipped, he flipped his commitment from Florida baseball to Alabama football. Um, but uh, we checked in with him right after the early signing period, and uh, this was when we already knew Mike Loxley was taking the job in Maryland. He was still very firm. He wasn't really even recruited by Loxley. It was more Danny Nose and Brent Key. Uh, fast forward a few weeks, and Brent Key and Danny Nose are both gone. Uh, so we checked in with him again, and you know he, he's saying the right things. Uh, he's saying he's still committed. At the same time, he's still leaving the door open for other schools to get involved. And I think it's going to be interesting with him. I think this does, I think the staff changes do affect him. Um, as far as uh, his interest in Alabama, I, I think Bama still is obviously very interested in him. And, and once we see who officially will be the offensive coordinator, we'll kind of get their their opinion on him as well. Uh, but Nick Saban, get, uh, uh, Carson Beck and Nick Saban talked the other night um, after all this kind of went down. And obviously Saban kind of reassured him that they want him as a part of the class. They're going to keep recruiting him hard. All that good stuff, um, and, and that's kind of where we sit right now. He wants to he wants to see who the new offensive coordinator is. He, um, we've obviously we talked to him about it potentially being Steve Sarkeesian, which is kind of what everyone's anticipating. And he said he thinks that would be a great hire. He thinks uh, he thinks he's a good coach with a with a good track record. He said you know he he said we'll see if Steve <laughs> he said we'll see if Steve Sarkeesian likes me. Um, so I think he's kind of just waiting to see get to know the new coaches in Tuscaloosa uh, before he you know makes any decisions about his recruitment. I think Miami and Florida are the two schools to watch. Obviously, Miami with Dan Enos now, and then Florida was a uh, was his favorite school growing up. So those are the two schools to watch um, with him, and obviously some other schools are going to get involved as well probably this spring with new offers. So I, I think he's firm right now, but uh, Bama's going to have to keep recruiting him like he's uncommitted. As far as early enrollees go for this 2019 class, has that pretty much come off without a hitch, uh, as far as you can tell? Obvious to Le- obviously, Talia tonga uh out at the Polynesian Bowl. Um, so I guess he'll be on campus next week. But uh, is it pretty much gone off the, the way you thought it would with the early enrollees? Yeah, it, it actually really has. Um, for, for this large of an early enrollee class, um, you usually have a guy or two that uh, they say they're going to enroll early and then it doesn't really work out they have to come in the summer or, or in some cases they don't qualify but every guy that said they're going to early enroll um, looks on on track to do that they have everybody on campus with the ex- exception of like you said Talia Tungavaloa he is still in Hawaii uh, he can't obviously he's he is signed and he's enrolling early but he can't he couldn't have played in the Polynesian Bowl if he had enrolled at Alabama so that's the reasoning behind that um, and then the other um, everybody else is on campus besides King Makuda uh, the only hit uh, hiccup there with, with King Makuda, he has everything done. He's qualified. He can enroll early. He just didn't get his test scores back until the day before the deadline. So he's kind of waiting in that uh, admi- administrative process right now, w- waiting to, to see if he can get on the campus early or whether if, or if he has to wait until uh, until May. But either way, he's qualified. He's good to go. He's just waiting before he gets approved. Um, so those are the only two guys. Um, everybody else is a summer enrollee. Trey Sanders had one or two enroll early. Um, I think he's still getting some stuff done to, to – be good to go by may there's no you know there's no uh, it seems like everything's fine there Uh, he's just kind of taking a semester off and he's going to come in may so went over really well i think right now there's i want to say 14 early enrollees early enrollees on campus um and and so yeah i mean i think ben is thrilled with this uh, this class and uh, ready to get these guys um get them a semester under their belt and get ready for the fall well, there you go. Hank South, recruiting analyst for BamaOnline.com. Does such a great job for the website, part of the 247sports.com network. Give Hank a follow on Twitter as well, at Hank South 247 Hank, I'll let you get back to it, my man. As always, uh, we appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Travis.